All right, the Catalyst, St. Ricketts, www.stricketts.com. Tuesday night. Yo, yo, yo. Okay, Tuesday nights for fire cannot burn. Wednesday night is the Catalyst. Uh, <laughs> good evening. We are here again Wednesday night live with the you show. Yo, 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 everybody. That's a better spot. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff the Shark Perini with you uh, on a Wednesday night and a good Wednesday night. As well, with me on Wednesdays, Allie Commissaro. Allie, good evening. I noticed you got some great eyeliner to go along with the hairdo. You're <laughs> for always popping. You're like a human rainbow. And I, I was that. kind <laughs> of influenced by F FDS band, like Francesca. She has like the coolest eyeshadow. And going through, I was looking at it and I was like, wow, like. I need to step up my game with my eyeshadow. So she is a super cool human being. An FDS show, uh, as of now, is going to be making an appearance on the Wednesday night program on the twenty second. Yeah, with some brand new music with the lovely Francesca and the band. I'm not gonna lie, a little nervous. Love the FDS band. Um, a while back, we came close. We had to turn it down at the last minute, but they will be here on a Wednesday night. A couple weeks. I am so excited. So am I. Stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for a lot of great stuff that's coming up on the program. Uh, Tuesdays and Wednesday nights are packed going into June. So spring and summer, we got you covered. Tuesday night, man, what do I do? It's Tuesday. Wednesday night, man, what do I do? It's Wednesday. You come right here. Sit in front of your computer. You grab a beverage. And you watch the Yo Show. That's what I do. Well, I don't have a choice. <laughs> but I still do it. Tonight on the program, uh, we... I'm going to call it something a little different that we do. Normally we have a, a guest come on and they do their segment and they chat and we talk about their stuff and they, you know, they go and we continue. Tonight we got a uh, individual on who has a lot to say and he's told us a he's got lot. A lot, to say. <laughs> a lot. And he don't plan on going anywhere. So we're pretty much going to spend the entire evening with this gentleman once he uh, logs on. Shouldn't be too long. Tonight we do go up close and personal. We have a chat with the one only Mr. Michael Lohan. Yeah. Of course, we all know Michael. Lindsay's dad. I love Lindsay. I love Michael. I love Michael. He's a cool dude. And he's going to come out tonight and just talk about a bunch of stuff. And he said, nothing's off the table. That scares me. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people say that to us. They do. And you know why? Because this isn't, and they got they get to learn. We're not, a few things. We're not tabloid uh, TV. We're not attackers. We don't dig deep into their soul. We come on. Sorry, I still can't shake this nonsense. We let them come on. We let them speak. We let them talk about what's going on. And whether it's stuff we know of or stuff we don't know of, we let you just say it. If it's stuff you got inside that aren't in the books, come on to say it. And he, like Michael said, he wants to talk about family. He wants to talk about truths, truths and falses. And hey, whatever, it's man. It's so We're here. funny how I even met him. Because I met him like 11 years ago That's and cool. I met him at a pillow fight that <laughs> actually was a uh, Damon was running it. Yeah. And he was the referee and I was fighting in the underdog fight. And it was, I believe Shyla versus Octomom. Yeah. Oh, and, Jesus. <laughs> and we were sitting afterwards and we were talking about like just life and about the pillow fight and everything. And I was starving and I ordered like two full platters, Jeff. I mean, huge platters full of food, including my usual cheesesteak. But I ordered like a whole nother platter on top of that. And I'm like going to town and friends know I love cheesesteaks, but nobody was like really paying attention to what I was doing. And 
Michael looked over at me and he's like, are you pregnant? <laughs> and I was like, no way. No way. Like, there's not a chance. And my friends had all kind of been telling me that my boobs were getting bigger. So a week after that, I found out that I was pregnant. And now I have Jackson. How about that? You should have you should have named him Michael because he knew it. Jewel Tady in the house, our Tuesday night girl. Good evening, Jewel. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, like, Jewel. Well, she was looking at the comments. He was that Michael was leaving. She's like, Boy, you're you're in for a good one tonight. And you know, he he's a dude. You know what I mean? It's like we all have things. But we're dudes. And for us dudes to do dumb shit or good shit or fun shit and try to make it out there, hey, <laughs> I don't blame you. I'm a Michael guy. <laughs> So many people like have so many things. It's crazy because some people go by him as a person. Some people go by what they hear in the media. I mean, some people don't really know him other than maybe one thing they heard on TMZ or Newsweek or whatever. And they've built a whole like uh, just a whole like uh, vision of him and it's yeah. crazy like i've said if i was half the things people invented that i was <laughs> i'd be like the coolest dude on earth i'd be a billionaire <laughs> you know i'd be all this great stuff and kind of like with michael like you, you read about his stuff and like the real stuff and the stuff that he that he types himself on social media that are like his life and like Man, where, where's this at when the media is building up these stories? Like, give us some real deal. And that's a little bit of a problem there with media. I mean, we're slightly media ourselves uh, to an extent. But the way the media just paints everybody is, is I something I don't consider else. myself media. I don't know. We're, we're not really media. We're, we're a, a freedom platform. Like I said, I love people who come on and... <laughs> And talk to business. Platform. Yeah, that's that's what I'm going to call it from now on. So speaking of media, speaking of people with things to say and things to get off their chest. Well, he was there and then he walked away for a minute. So we'll wait till he comes back. Michael was backstage sitting ready. Okay, he's there sitting ready to go. Looks like he's uh, lined up. Our guest tonight. Do you want to go he's... down the list of? Absolutely. He's a TV <laughs> personality. He's a father, ordained minister, Wall Street trader. Lindsay's dad, and after tonight, our new best friend. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for our guest tonight, Mr. Michael Lohan in the house. Thank yeah. you very much. I appreciate it. Not hey, a problem, Mike. man. Thank you. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. We can hear you. It's a, it's a okay. little distant, but we can hear it. We're, we're Do I have to keep these on, or can I take them off? Um, Up to you. Uh, sometimes okay. it'll cause an echo, especially a little further back. So if you can, I guess leave them on for now. We'll see how it works out. I don't, but, I don't want to get anyone dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> too late did we come on dizzy <laughs> first of all thank you so much for taking the time to come on with us um and your name is out there and everybody is like wow michael lohan like what's going on and what's new with him i'm like well you got to sit down and watch because you're going to tell us everything you're going to tell us what's going on with you like you're, you're not he said nothing to hide and everything that goes on in your life you're gonna I, I like that i like that a lot i appreciate it um so really let's get into the, the first thing first is the anniversary of your sobriety, 18 years. Dude, that's that's amazing. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. February 19th, thank you very much. Yeah, man, the willpower alone is absolutely amazing, and we congratulate you on it. Do you want to tell the story of what led you there? Because I know you said there was a story that led you down that road and kind of brought you to the decision it was time. Do you want to share that with us while we got you? Sure, literally, it was a road. It was um, The road was Cold Spring Road in Sasset, New York, um, I was actually, I hadn't drank in about seven years prior to that, but I was out at dinner with a friend of mine uh, at a place called Janie's Steakhouse in Huntington, Long Island. And I uh, I got a distressing phone call from an anonymous number, and they said that my daughter had a problem and uh, oh. I should get, should get down to New Orleans. And they hung up the phone. I had no one, no information, didn't know what was going on. One thing led to another. I finally, uh, I called everyone I knew to try to find out no tell me. Um, and I finally did get another call and they said, uh, I better get down there 
And someone had said that Lindsay overdosed, and I, I said to myself, she doesn't do heroin. Back then, you know, there was no fentanyl or anything around. And one thing led to another, and I panicked, and I got in my car. Um, I had three Irish coffees before that, which I didn't want to do, but I don't, you know, it. Uh, I just was overwhelmed, and there's no reason, but I did have three Irish coffees, got in the car, was doing about 80 miles an hour on the way to the airport, and I had a telephone pole, and actually my heart stopped in the accident, uh, and they had, to, they had to resuscitate me. But I woke up in the hospital. Um, it was, I thought it was in a dream. There was a pastor there. His name was Jimmy Jack. He was from, uh, he was from Teen Challenge. And the judge actually arraigned me at my bedside. She came wow. to the hospital to arraign me. And um, it was my first DUI. And guess what? I got one and a third to four years in prison, which turned out to be a blessing. No one could understand why I got time for my first DUI. My blood alcohol level was 0.12, which was over the limit. Not much, but I was impaired. There's no doubt about it. And um, it changed my life. It really did change my life. I stuck with Pastor Jimmy through that one of the, uh, I wound up doing 21 months. I appealed my case. It was finally heard. They released me after 21 months, but they got 21 months out of me, which was probably the most life-changing experience I ever had in my life. Well, wow. I'm, I'm sure. And it's, I mean, the fa it's like a second lease on life. And we talk about it. And I had, I mean, certainly not the same. I had a cardiac issue myself, kind of got a second lease on life. So I know right there, you change your life, you change your habits. And, you know, you've done some great things through sobriety. People that heard you were coming on said, hey, Michael shared my story. Michael's helped me. Michael's talked uh, me through it. And I've heard him and watched him. And, and that, that's great. I mean, doing it, Making the change and helping others has got to be special for you. It does. And, you know, it's, it's kind of hurtful now in the position I'm in, and I'm sure we'll get to that later. But what happened, to rewind a little bit, when I that happened to me, and, and God literally took my life and he gave it back to me in that accident. And I made a commitment at that point to serve God and help people with addiction problems. And I promised to do that for the rest of my life because of the recent issue I had with that patient brokering. BS in Florida, um, I can't work in the industry anymore. And it, it kind of uh, let the wind out of my sails to a certain degree. But, you know, God takes us a different path in our life. And he brought me into the whole wellness industry, which has been amazing. And I'm uh, able to help people in other ways. And to go back to what you were saying, it's all over the internet that Lindsay overdosed. Do you want to go back to a little bit to? after you got that call and what kind of went down with that? Well, you know what, in retrospect now, we look at things and, you know, you have fentanyl and everything. Back then, there was no fentanyl, like I said before. So I doubt it was fentanyl. I never did find out what did happen because um, I was, I was exhausted. Yeah. It was in the hospital. <laughs> All I know is when I was in jail, I got divorce papers from Dina which was uh, my ex-wife. Uh, I wasn't happy with that. We're on a, in a great place now, though. Dean and I are great friends. I'm even friends with her boyfriend, Jesse, um, which is kind of odd, but we are. Um, <laughs> Congrats on coming that far. You yeah. guys have been through a lot. <laughs> well, you know what? For the sake of the children, the children, you don't want to have any kind of, you know, that was part of the problem that we had when Dean and I, I never expected Lizzie to reach the level she did. I, I certainly didn't so quickly in life. And we were always a, just a regular family. My family, my side of the family, and Dina's side of the family, for that matter, are just regular people. We all, everyone in my family works in Wall Street, or they, they, have, or they have companies, and we're just you, very unassuming people. But for once Lindsay reached that level of stardom, and we got that notoriety, my family kind of stepped back because they don't like being in the public. I mean, I'm a, a nephew is a professional hockey player. My brother was a professional girls player. I have another cousin mm -hmm. that's a professional golfer, and they're not in the media. I mean, the only reason why my nephew Kevin was in the media playing hockey is because he's Lindsay's cousin, and you know there was some. He got jumped by some guys when he was a captain of BC when he was in grad school. He was jumped by some cops from Philadelphia. Well, <laughs> that sounds about right, Philly. <laughs> that were up in Boston, and they uh, got a little irate. They five guys jumped my nephew. But, wow. Um, you know, it's a, it, that's the only reason why they're in the news. They don't like the press. My family are very, very good people. But, you know, Dina, Dina kind of, she liked being involved in that because she grew up in that. She wanted to be a dancer growing up. And uh, 
although I did some soap operas when I was a kid and did some TV commercials, I never really liked that industry and I went and worked on Wall Street instead. Um, but, you know, people, it, it, it's kind of hard. It's really hard when you have a kid that's really has come to that point so quickly. And, well, she was um, massive. Yeah, she's been she, in everything. <laughs> yeah, she's but, you know, been. It's a shame, too, because we didn't, we weren't, I was in a business i never was an agent i never brokered any deals never made a red set for my daughter she'll tell you that i never took one penny and dina was her manager and uh, she was entitled to whatever she got i don't care but um i really don't think that families should be involved so much with their kids when they're in the industry because people get the wrong idea and i never want to benefit from my children i mean they, they, let's face it we didn't raise a star we didn't make Lindsay what she is. Lindsay has that gift, that talent. I don't know any kid at 10 years old that could take 15 pages of script and memorize it in, a, in an hour and not make a mistake. That could put on two accents and the and Natasha Richardson, God rest her soul, say to the director, to Nancy Myers, why do you have a voice coach? She did it on her own. Wow. You know, so you... you She's just an incredible talent. And it's My son friend. was actually just watching that. And he's like, I was trying to explain to him. He's like, which one's her and which one <laughs> edited? And I'm like, the answer well, is both. Both, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it, was a, it was a long shoot. It was seven, wow. seven months of, of a lot of work for her. And, my, and I give credit to Dean and my other children because they went all over the world with her. I flew London, flew to California, but Dina was with them all the time. I still had to work, and um, it was hard. It's a family. It really is a family affair when sure. you're involved in an industry like that, especially when you have young kids. We couldn't let Lindsay do it on her own. We certainly wouldn't let her, you know, be chaperoned by somebody. That she had to go to school, and Disney was really great about that. Nancy, Nancy Myers, and Charles Shire were their parents themselves, and they were always Lindsay school, 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 school. And I give them a lot of credit for the way they, they handled Lindsay. And situation with the shooting. That, that is awesome. You talk about being like a regular family and you don't have that option and not to compare, but you look at like Britney Spears and her dad and her dad forever is just this monster in the media because he tried to help his daughter get better and watch the money, etc. And, you know, I mean, I know it's a little different situation, but people like the media takes right off as, oh, Lindsay's dad is this, that, that, that. And I never even knew that much about you. And and to start reading, and all you read was what Tabloid was feeding us. How frustrating does that have to be? And how do you handle that? It's horrible. You know, you know the worst part about it is when someone jumps on the bandwagon, when someone says one thing about you, people want to jump on that bandwagon and keep talking about it. And although you're right and they're wrong, you never get the fine print, fine print. You never get the correction. People, you know, people that meet me, they say to me, Oh my God, Michael, you're nothing like they make you out to be in the press. <laughs> and I'm like, gee, thanks, you know. <laughs> and, and you're going to get me tonight, good, bad, or indifferent. But you can I, ask me anything, and I'll tell I you. I got to ask, what is the craziest story that you've heard about yourself? Oh, when I jumped out the window in, um, when I jumped out the window in Tampa. <laughs> When From I, how high? I fell four, four stories. Four stories. So let me tell you the story behind that. You want to hear it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. So um, my children's mother, Kate, Kate Major Lohan, um, and I were just dating at the time. We were engaged. And she was having some struggles with addiction and I told her I couldn't do it anymore. So she moved back from, from Boca Raton. She moved back to, um, actually I was in Fort Lauderdale at the time and Dennis Rodman was my next door neighbor. Oh me. Jesus. <laughs> oh, that's gotta be fascinating. I had, I had one penthouse. He had the other at the Ocean Manor <laughs> Hotel. Anyway. So we, that's like a media um, frenzy, not to cut you off. You two <laughs> side by side it had to be something for the media. No, I was like babysitting Dennis. I was like, Dennis, you got to stop drinking. And, you know, we're, st we're still friends. And ironically, you wound up doing the commercial, the Planet Fitness commercial with Lindsay for the last Super Bowl. Not the last one, the one before. One before, yeah. But anyway, so um, Kate went back to her father's house in Laurel Oak Key, and she was having some arguments with her dad. And she said, I have to get out of here. Um, she said, I want to go to Tampa. So I said, okay, I'll get your place in Tampa. I would go up on weekends and look at places. I found this beautiful place where all the Buccaneers lived. It's beautiful. 
penthouse apartment, and I set her up in the apartment. And um, there was a day to move in, and I got all the furniture, and I was there with a friend of mine uh, named David. Uh, and Kate didn't show up, and I called her, and it turned out she was out partying with a girl. And they were doing some drinking and some other stuff. And uh, she finally, uh, I said, listen, if you don't get here and you don't take occupancy, I'm getting let, let the apartment go. So she wound up coming really late, really wasted, and I was upset with her. And she was in the closet talking to the girl she was with. And I guess they were arranging to do some more partying. And I heard her, and I took the phone out of her hand, and I said, listen to the girl. I said, you ever, ever get her involved in your crap again? She was stealing cocaine. I said, if you ever get involved in your crap again, I'm going to the police, and I'm going to report you. And I smashed the phone. The girl called up Tampa police and said I was attacking Kate in the apartment. So the police come to the apartment, and because I smashed the phone, that's against, I didn't know this, but that's against the law because they consider you're not giving people access, someone access to the outside. Wow. So they, they were going to let me go. And eventually, but they did let me go. And um, I was given a court date to, you know, to, to have it heard. And when I left, it was, of course, it was an order of protection. So I went and stayed a hotel, at a hotel called the Tahitian Inn in Tampa. That's the place that I would stay in every time I came up to look on the weekend. So they knew me there. And Kate heard I was staying there and she said, I know what you're doing. She called me up and said, I know what you're doing there. You're hitting on that waitress or you're with that waitress. I said, Kate, you have an order of protection. You just tried to have me arrested. Don't call me anymore. Sure. I didn't call Kate. She called me. But then I get a call from the police and they say, you violated the order of protection. Can you come downstairs? And I said, no, I didn't violate anything. She called me. They said, well, you weren't supposed to have contact and talk to her. So I'm looking out my window and there's cameras and police outside. Oh, Jesus. And it turned out it was TMZ. So Kate had called TMZ and had this whole thing set up. And I go to my door to look out. I see cops coming down my hallway. And my friend David had to be next to me. And I'm, you know, I went to three years of free law. So I know what the, you know, what the warrants entail and what they can and can't do. And I know my rights. They could go in my room because it was in my name, especially if they had a warrant. But they couldn't go in David's room. So I went out to my balcony. <laughs> it's about to get good. <laughs> I, I tried to jump to his balcony. Oh, my and, God. And I grabbed on, and one <laughs> hand slipped, and I could feel my fingers going. And I said, oh my I'm going to go. And I looked down, it was four stories, and I said to myself, all I can do is push off the wall and hit that tree. So I kicked off the wall, I hit the tree, hit the wall again, hit the tree, and landed in the bushes. And by the grace of God, I didn't break a bone. I just, my wow. face was swollen and black and blue. And again, it was in a hospital. <laughs> so, <laughs> I kind of relived what I did back when I got my DUI, but I was a drunk this time. So technically, you did kind of jump out of the window. Technically. <laughs> and you no, do I have guess. some Spider-Man moves. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you know, want to be in the movies too, right? Well, Spider-Man's a popular character. Why not give it a whirl? <laughs> yeah, right. And with the whole, like, Metroverse, uh, there's so many different Spider-Mans now. I'm sure you could get in on one of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could be. Yeah, hey, Rain. A little, a little too old for that now. The bones are a little more brittle than they were back then. I can imagine, and you've you've been through a lot as well. It just seems like, and that's the kind of crazy thing when you talk about. You seem to be you end up in the wrong place, you end up on the wrong side of like the law, the wrong side of the controversy. But when something like that happens, it's almost like you're the victim. But now nobody sees it because, hey, it's Michael Lohan. So, you know, she calls you, you answer your telephone, and boom, here you are in trouble again. Well, it happens all the time. I mean, but, you know, the same thing happened in Southampton years later when I found out she was drinking. And I was in Houston, Texas at the time. And um, I flew home on the red eye because I was upset because the kids were there and she was drinking. And I got to the house, and um, it was in the morning. And it was when I was driving on the road, I saw her passing me in the other in the other direction. Southampton's a small town, and I pulled into the gas station, and she pulled in, and I saw vodka in her car. And uh, some people may not like this, 
this, but I called the cops. I called my friend who's the mayor, and then I called the chief of police and who I knew out there. I said, look, she's drinking and driving. She had my kids in the car. She's going to hurt somebody. I said, pull her over. So they wound up pulling her over. She got a DUI. In New York, it's catch and release. If it's not a major felony, a major crime, you just go in and they release you without bond. So they release her without, without bond. She comes back to my house. And the next morning, she said that she was going to a lawyer in town. So I said, okay, I'm going food shopping with the kids. I went food shopping with the kids. I got a call from her. I'm done with the lawyer. Meet me at the coffee shop. Went to the coffee shop surrounded by cops with my wow. two poor little kids and i said what's going on they said your wife said you assaulted her i never touched her listen this is how the law is so screwed up so they arrest me and they release me too but they released me to the same house now if there was any kind of any kind of domestic violence why would they send me back to the same house that i went to with her that's the making for a war right so you get really get get hurt by the grace of God, when I went back there, I put my phone on record, and I said, Kate, why would you do this to me? Why would you lie? Is this retribution because I called the cops? And she said, yep, that's what it is. I said, fine. Wow. Got my car, drove down to the police department, let them hear the tape of the drug charges. <laughs> well, I mean, it... You're guilty until yeah. proven innocent. You're not innocent until proven guilty. This system is broken. It's broken. You have shows on Vice where these people are interviewing these, what is it called, drugs, Inc. They're interviewing fentanyl dealers and people, trafficking people, and these organ harvesters and all this stuff. They're interviewing them, and they don't even arrest the people. Right. That's right. confusing. <laughs> it's really confusing. So you're yeah. allowing them to do that in the show intervention. They pay people to do a documentary of them buying drugs and using drugs. And then they're televising it, and, and, and then they're putting them into the show, and they're putting them into rehab. Don't you think that giving them the money to buy the drugs is just, maybe there was something in it, maybe there's fentanyl, they could die doing that? Yeah. I mean, a, a network or a production company paying someone to use drugs? Come on. I mean, something's really wrong with society. I agree, and like I said, a lot of things are done to sell the ratings and make things look bigger. And I know somebody who you pointed out, and I agree 100%. You, you want to talk about Dr. Phil. And they had a run with Dr. Phil, and there's a guy selling ratings by showing his side. Like, he's the good guy, and everybody else is the bad guy. What was the experience? What went, yeah, what went down with that? Because you said, feel free to talk about it. I, I, I got I to gotta talk about Dr. Phil. I'm not, I've never been a Just fan. sitting there yeah. like... Uh, what hell? I got <laughs> which, which time? I mean, I'm sorry, shut up times. Um... So the time I think you're talking about was also involved Kate, where Kate, um, I had full custody of my kids. I, I still have. Um, That's great. And Kate was, um, she was not living at the house with us, and she was not supposed to be around the kids. And I had, um, she said she wanted to go to rehab. So she wanted to come to the house and get some of her clothes. I said, okay, I'll be out with the kids all day. I'll be back at about 5 o'clock. So... Um, I'll be out till five. So I'll come back at six. Just make sure you're out at five when I get back. So I get back at six and she's still there and drinking. So I had a, a verbal war with her. It was on tape. It was just verbal, nothing physical, just yelling at her. What are you doing here? You shouldn't be here. This and that. One thing led to another. She did leave. She goes to rehab for 30 days. When she gets out of rehab, she goes to her counselor and goes to her case manager and said, guess what? Before I went in to rehab, Michael violated the court order by allowing me around the kids when I went to get my clothes. They took my kids away. And my poor And that's what landed him on Dr. Phil. And my poor the... amazing mother got on a plane at eleven thirty at night just to come down and get my kids. Wow. And you know, they they took them and put them they took them they took them right out of school and put them in with a foster care family. How long did it? How long did it take you to get the kids back after that episode had aired? Weeks. A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. But even a day is too much for a child. Sure. To be taken from someone who loves you. I, I mean, my little kids. I raised the boys, and I was a single. That's why I have so much, so much respect for single moms and single parents in general, but a lot of single moms because now I know what it's like to really raise kids on your own. 
And I had a job. A lot of moms, single moms, don't have a job to get child support. I didn't get child support. I worked. And I raised two little kids. And they were like, what, six months to a year and two years wow. old? I mean, I'd be laying with one in bed and having the bottles next to me, feeding the other one the bottles. But yeah. so it wasn't easy. But um, with Dr. Phil, he puts a spin on everything. And he sure. kind of attacked me saying I did the wrong thing. I thought I was doing the right thing by allowing her to get her stuff and giving enough time for her to get out. But you know what? That's the way they spin things. And during, you didn't see this part, but during, when he started to get really, like really kind of attacking me, and knocking me, I leaned over. It was going to a break, and he leaned over to me and he said, "Do you really want to mess with me?" And I looked at him and I said, "Do you really want to mess with me?" He said, <laughs> "So we went to a break. I don't think he wanted to go back and finish the show. Someone pulled a fire alarm. So, it, so there was like a one-hour delay. In oh my meantime, god! They pulled me in the back and they said, Michael, you're going to settle down.' And I said, "Settle down. Tell him to settle down because I'm not taking this bullshit." Right. I'm not going to, I'm going to tell it like it is. And I'm going to call him out for what he is because he's not a doctor. I mean, come on, give me a break. Well, we got a surprise for you on our show, Dr. Phil. No, I'm kidding. Dr. Phil in the house. Bring him, bring him on. I know, bring right? That was never a fan. That's the thing. Like, it's his show. So, yeah, he's going to get the upper hand and present it his way and spin it to sell the ratings. He could care less about who's in that seat and what the other side, because there's three sides of every story. Your side, their side, and the truth, as they always say. He's not after that. He's after what's going to get a rating. What trigger word can I say to make you snap? And obviously, he knows it. Well, he did it with my ex-wife, Dina, too, when she did the show, and it made it look like she was out of her mind. They didn't mention that before she went on the show in the uh, in the green room. They had coffee and they had alcohol and, you know, just, I don't know. It just, there's a lot of funny business that goes on with the talk shows. There really is. I mean setups and so on and so forth it's like reality tv you know i have to say this the shows that i did celebrity rehab and couples and family therapy it wasn't scripted and it was real reality it did, they just you know we did what we did said what we said but they edited it to make it look the way they wanted to look sure not to say some <laughs> yeah. of the shows aren't scripted because they are they put them in situations that don't know what to do what to, you know what to say but ours were the shows I did uh, were really well done. I don't like the way it edited the part of them, but they, you know, it is what it is. When you put yourself out there, you have to be open to whatever they're going to do. So, you know, it's part of the game. See, I think you need yourself a platform like this, where there's no FCC, you control your own, you say what you say on your <laughs> I would curse if I curse, but I don't curse. So, you know, I... <laughs> we, we, we curse here sometimes. There's no regulation, but, but I get you. But well, so, the Howard Stern show. Jeff's wow. been doing pretty good since last week. We had uh, we had some minors on, so he, he, he you did really good last week. I was so proud of you. For the teenagers, you got to keep it clean. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they're worse than we are. True, <laughs> true. There's there's been stories here in PA closing Chick Fil A's under sixteen, not allowed stuff like that. So so I get yeah, you there. So a lot of the stuff that, that comes up with you, and I know Allie will get into more of it later, like you have never shied away from lie detector tests and proving yourself innocent, et cetera. And you're, you're winning these all the time. Nobody ever comes out and says, hey, well, you know, what are we going to say? Michael Loham did a lie detector test and came out great. Where's that story? Why is that not being shown to people? It, it really gets me sick because let's face it, if you watch any show, whether it's Eight hours, or if it's Dateline or whatever, when there's a story on about somebody that commits a crime, the first thing they try to do is find out if someone's telling the truth or not. So what do they do? They say, you're willing to take a lie detector test. If they take it and they pass, usually they say, you know what, he passed the test and his alibi is good, you know, he's scratching off the list as a, as a suspect, or he's not guilty. If someone says they're not going to take the test right away, they're under scrutiny, they think they have something to hide. And if they fail a test, of course, you know they're guilty and they believe they're guilty. And usually they are. Some people are nervous and they can't get by it, but most of the time they know what they're doing. They're very specific in the testing. Well, when this little patient brokering thing came up, I, the first thing I said is, I want to take a lie detector test. 
I never sold a patient in my life. Everyone. I have hundreds of letters. I have proof that I got paid a, a steady salary every single month for every single treatment center I worked for. And even when I worked at the point, I was at Pride. I was sending people to detoxes when we couldn't do, take care of some of the clients. I'd send them out. So why wouldn't I get paid from the other places if I was a patient? Right. Okay, let's go back a little bit because people might not know exactly what we're talking about. Okay. Why don't you explain what Pride Recovery is and what you were doing for them? So Pride Recovery um, was a treatment center, or is a treatment center. It was owned by a guy named uh, Jared, uh, Jared Agaroff and his uncle Roy. Um, and they were having a hard time financially. They were getting clients in, and they asked me to come and help them fix it because I owned my, my first rehab school dream, and it was a fantastic rehab, done the right way, done the right, everything went really well. And then I went on to consult for other treatment centers and build models for them that really worked. And I would help build that model, then market it for them and get them full, and then leave and go to another place. Part of my job when you're marketing is to get advertising out there, do interviews like this, and talk about the treatment center. You don't go out there and you don't you don't go to a Starbucks and look for junkies in Delray Beach on Atlantic Avenue and, and get them in. And I don't mean to offend anyone by saying junkies. That's just the way they put it out there. Sure. That's, so anyway, so um, so it was struggling, and uh, a guy that owned my first rehab with me, his name was Brett Hirsch, had gone over to Pride. To get to put some money in and try to get you know become a part of it so what does he do he calls me right away mike can you help me can you get clients in here can you help me map this place i said the first thing you have to do is get a good program down and you have to get better housing because the housing you have really sucks mm -hmm. i wouldn't send anyone they didn't have <laughs> on the walls there were mattresses on the floor no nightstands none of that i said get a different house they did that they started to listen to me for the first couple of months i didn't get paid I just told them what to do. I said, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to help you build this place up. I'm going to help you put all the pieces together, get the right staffing and so on and so forth. And I'm going to bring an investor in, but I want 10% of whatever the investor puts in. And I want a steady salary. So that was it. They didn't have a lot of money. And you have to understand how treatment centers work. They get paid from insurance companies and they don't always get paid on time. So money comes in in part and parcel. One week you might get two thousand dollars. The next week you might get sixty thousand dollars. Wow! So when I first started working there, they couldn't pay me. I, I only asked for ten grand a month, and usually I get double that. So I said, "Here's what I want." I said, "I just want my ten grand a month." And as they got money in, they pay me. So they give me twenty five hundred here, another twenty five hundred. It always added up to ten thousand a month, though. But when they got in trouble for doing whatever they were doing. And this guy, Brett, got in trouble for other stuff. Right away, they turned and said, Michael Lohan was selling us patients. And I was like, what? I get 10000 a month. I do radio shows. I have a van going around. I do all this advertising for you. I have all this stuff going. I, I look at the checks. It adds up to 10000 a month. How can you say I'm getting paid per patient? And they said, well, you got 2500 for this patient. You got 2500 for this one, 3000 for this one, 2000 for this one. A patient broker gets paid the same amount for every client. They don't get right. paid. <laughs> None of it made sense. But because of Michael Lohan, right away, they charged me with all this patient brokering. It ended up to $16,000. And then the other 10000 was conspiracy to sell patients. So whatever conspiracy is like, well, if I get a patient, I'm going to sell, will you pay me for it? That's conspiracy. I never said that, never did it. As a matter of fact, when Jared and Brett got in trouble, they ran it on me so they could get reduced sentences, which they did. So they saved their skin by giving me up when I didn't even do anything because I'm Michael Lohan. It's a feather in the cap for West Palm Beach for the, you know, the, the county. And they... I should have fought it. I took the lie detector test, had a ton of, had a mountain of evidence that I didn't do it, but it would have cost the retainer was 100000 if I went to trial. It would have wound up being 150000 to $200,000. And my name would have been out there. They probably would have said a lot of crummy stuff, and I didn't want to drag my family through that, especially Lindsay, when she was doing a when she had to come back. So I, I just did, I took probation. 
I guess it's so you, all you can do, and you, you kind of talk about the law and how sometimes, no matter how innocent you are, you're stuck in, in a situation. We have now, I got to kind of apologize because the way our system set up, it doesn't show it great, but I got the copies of these lie detector tests. I told Al earlier they don't come out very well. So you can kind of blow it up and get an idea. Um, in short, he was telling the truth. Right. Have you received any money from Pride for patient referrals? You said no. Lie detector showed that you were telling the truth. Have you ever referred any patients to Pride for money? Your answer was no. Lie detector shows you're telling the truth. Have you ever planned with anyone at Pride Recovery to receive money for patient referrals? You said no. Again, the lie detector shows you're telling the truth. Again, I apologize because Michael has these forms that show his innocence and these great lie detectors are our platform's not great to show them. It's about as good as I can get, but I just want to show some of them where the results are there. The science is there. Everybody says, oh, take a lie detector test. We'll show you. And you like they showed the stress test and they showed how your, your body was reacting normally. You're patient and calm and just delivering honest answers. And again, attacked. But look, there's the evidence. The evidence is in these, like I said, we have to just see that Everything you go through, you're going through the story. Of, you well, know, actually, I took three polygraphs, and they all yeah. came out the same. I passed all three. And then I took a voice stress test from a, a sheriff in West in Palm Beach County, and I passed that too. So I took four lie detector tests, and I passed all of them. So how can, if you're lying, you know, how do you beat a lie detector? If you know how to beat a lie detector test, you're, you know, sell the information because a lot of people are probably buy it from you. You you <laughs> do you, do you, you know the lie. other? Do you know what the other guys got for charges? Um, Jared got probation, a very short probation, and Brett got sixteen months in federal prison, but he still hasn't gone. He's still out there working for them, trying to get a sentence reduced. Wow, that's that's unbelievable. Like I said, the the, the proof of it is there, and like like you said, like it. it comes with the name. Now you have this harness because, hey, I'm Michael Lohan. Oh, let's make him the fall guy. People won't believe us over him, right? And like I said, there's the proof in the pudding, and you still got to go out and explain and tell people what, what's right and wrong. You have to defend yourself, which is wrong. I tried to do that at the beginning, but you know what? It is what it is. I can't change the past. I mean, I like to change a lot of things I've done in my life. Am I a saint? Absolutely not. I mean, I, I had some points in my life where I was not a good guy. All I cared about was money and partying and having fun and buying things and my Ferraris and Maseratis and Jaguars. And I cared about money, private planes. That's all I cared about. That's not what life is about. Let me tell you, that's not what it's about. There's more important things in life and more material things and what you can make or what you can get. It's truly life is about doing the golden rule, do what for others as you want done that to yourself and helping other people. It's more joy for me in giving than doing anything else in my life. That's pretty awesome. You had mentioned um, earlier on when you commented on our post, you want to talk about family. Let, let's talk a little about family, your, your boys and, oh, and, and that, Lindsay so and how cute, everybody's the doing. Pictures. You look so <laughs> happy with your boys. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. There's some things in my life I don't know what to get into right now to be honest with you, but there's okay. little aspects of my life which I wish I could change them right now. There's other people in my life I wish I could have in my life that, you know, that I can't at this, at this point in time, but probably will in the future. But it's been, a, it hasn't been easy. Uh, my two little boys are in my life. My, my other kids, Michael, Ali, Lindsay, and Cody are absolutely amazing. Uh, they're doing really, really well. My son, Michael, just made me a grandfather. Congratulations. Oh, uh, congrats. Yeah, just amazing. Just amazing. I, I'm so blessed to have the kids I have. I really am. They're, they're all very, they're gifted in their own ways. They've been really blessed by God. And they're, they're good kids. They really are. Ali, Ali's been in a lot of the, a lot of movies. Yeah, She's Ali been has. A lot. She was yeah. just in that Falling for Christmas. She was Bianca. Yeah, Cody, Cody, Cody is actually in Irish Wish, which is coming out too. Oh, um, but the, you see, the thing about them is, especially Ali, is Ali has been doing things. Ali was a model in South Korea. She modeled all over the world. Ali never wrote on Lindsay's coattails. She never did, neither does Cody. But Michael certainly didn't because he's not in the industry, in the, in the 
Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Ali and Coney Island, they just they were just in Fashion Week with Lindsay and they were fantastic uh, in New York. But um, I give them a lot of credit because they're doing it on their own. They don't call Lindsay to ask her for favors. They mm-hmm. do it on their own. And I really admire that. Yeah, that is pretty Ali, amazing. Uh, Ali has a, a really nice song. Yeah, she, as a matter of fact, she sang the theme song for Temptation Island, the show. Oh, wow. Yeah, all right. She, awesome. works, she works with the Burnett family, with Mark Burnett's son, James, and he's uh, he's amazing. Actually, I know the mother from high school, Diane mm-hmm. Burnett, Mark Burnett's ex-wife. I know she grew up in the town I grew up in. So um, we're all friends, they're, and they're good people. I'm so happy to have my kids around really good people. They're really happy. That's great. Uh, I got it. Go ahead. I was going to say, like, no matter what anybody says about Michael Lohan, past, present, the blood in the veins of these children showed the talent and the drive and the ability. So that's something to be proud of. Like, you have a talented group of kids there, and, and like I said, you said they go out and get it, but it, it comes from somewhere. It starts in the family genes, man, so you're delivering that, and that's amazing. Well, thanks, but they didn't get their voice from me, that's for sure. They didn't get that from me. <laughs> My that's kids good. go to sleep because they don't want to hear me, not because I'm still them to sleep. <laughs> well, that's they it. Got confidence. They got right. the confidence from you. True. Yeah, they're, they're, and, and they get to drive to learn how to sing. So, like, I don't want to sing like Dad. So they start learning how to sing. Um, let's take a, a step back into a sad moment we learned today. We talked about the story last night. Good friend of yours, Mr. Tom Sizemore. Um, who obviously had the brain aneurysm and, and Tom had officially, I believe has passed today. You had said, um, how hard does that hit you? Cause I know you guys were close. We had this picture. Ali said he wants to make sure we share that. It's a great picture. Tom's a great guy, a great actor. And you guys are great there. How hard is that hitting you, man? It's gotta be tough. I don't know if you can tell, but I have tears in my eyes. It's I, just I, I can believe it. He's a- <laughs> I am too. I'm telling you, I'm all honestly. I, all I cared about was his son. That's it. He just he couldn't beat it. He couldn't beat his addiction. He just I'm not saying the aneurysm was from that, but you know, it could have been. But he's just um, I can't say he was taken too soon because God knows, you know, only God knows your time. You know? mm-hmm. Just like my, my mom's passing was all my mistake. You know, it just didn't happen. I don't know. It should have never happened. It's, I believe a lot of things should happen. We don't understand why they happen, but later on we will find out why. Um, but Tom was uh, an incredible talent. I remember uh, a little bit of a funny story. I was out with him at Barfly years ago. Years ago, I'm talking about twenty something years ago. And Sylvester Stallone was there, and Tom was uh, Tom was drinking a little too much. And I said, "Buddy, let me get you home." Got him home, and he wound up going over the girl. And um, and I had left, and then I got a call back from one of one of my friends and said, Mike, you better go over to Tom's house. I said, why? He said, there's a helicopter and police surrounding his house. I said, why? Because the girl he was with had an argument with him and left to call the police and said he, had, he was making meth in his house. Oh, my God. <laughs> Which was a lie. <laughs> they surrounded his house. So I had to go back to the house and try to talk him out. It was just it was a funny scene. But, uh, and then years later, <laughs> I guess it was about five years ago. I was doing a lot of events, uh, anti-addiction events, and I had a big event in Washington, D.C., and Mario Lopez and Dion Warwick and, and Tom and um, uh, a whole bunch of people. I invited a whole bunch of celebrities to come and talk. And, uh, Janet Snickerson was there. She was one of my guests, too. And, um, and Tom was there, and he, uh, he was doing really well. And his, uh, his manager, Mike, one of his managers, Mike Quinn, who's a very dear friend of mine to this day, really was on top of him as I was to try to keep him on the straight and narrow. And then he gets around it and he goes back home and gets around these people that are just not good people. The same thing happened to my daughter, just the people around them that just hang around, they're parasites, and they just throw things at them just to be part of their circle. And, and no matter how bad it is for them, they know by putting a drink in front of an alcoholic or putting a line in front of a coke addict or something, you're going to hurt them. You're going to lead them down the wrong path. That's not the thing to do, but they do it. They appeal to the darker side of them. And it's, you know. 
it's kind of a it, it's kind of a excuse the term if I'm if I'm out of line. It's kind of a misery loves company thing. Like people do it and they say, you know what, I need a partner here. And they'll throw it at anybody, especially if they know they got somebody. Whether you're recovering or not, they don't care. They're not about recovering and they could bring you back with them. It, it's a dangerous cycle, especially in celebrity. Like I'm no I'm no celebrity by any stretch of the imagination. No, yes, I, can you are. <laughs> I am tonight because I got a superstar sitting right with no, this here. Superstar. But, <laughs> but I will tell you that's very true because when I was in my heyday, so I never, growing up through high school and even college, I didn't party. I was all about sports and dating and all this stuff and making money. Uh, but when I got to Wall Street, when I was 21 years old, it was all about Friday nights and, you know, I was a weekend warrior drinking and coke all weekend. And it, you, but you had to be at work on Sunday, on Monday, or else you lost your job. So it was a two-day kind of thing. Yeah. But when I was partying in my heyday, and that lasted until I met Dina, she got pregnant, then all that nonsense stopped. But I would never party alone. I wanted to be with somebody. I right. never sat in a room doing coke or drinking. It was always with a group of people. You want, like you said, misery loves company. And it's just, uh, so I guess some people get, you know, when you get really into your addiction, or maybe it's heroin or something really hard. I'm not really comparing drugs, but some are a lot worse than others. Sure. But some, some drugs you want to be alone, but with drinking and coke, you want to be around people, you want to have a good time, you want to party. And to me, coke just prolonged me drinking because I could be drunk as a skunk and do a line of coke and <laughs> so I can never drink. And then, you right. to, then you're high and you want to get, you want to come down again so you drink. It's a, it's a crazy cycle. And I advise people, don't follow that cycle. It, yeah. it, leads, it leads to nowhere. It'll lead you to a telephone pole. It'll lead to your death. And by the grace of God, I have epiphany, but some people don't get that chance. So, you know, it just, um, you know, like the, it's just, it's really speaking, speaking of addiction, um, Kate's in for her third DUI right now, correct? Well, she was in. She was in for a third okay. DUI. Where, she, where do you guys stand as far as with you two with dealing with the issues? She's... Like a, there's other there's other issues that you know that I won't really get into for, to respect her, but she went to rehab. She's uh, doing pretty well sobriety wise, but being sober isn't just not drinking. We're not doing drugs. Sober is a lifestyle. Sober is conducting yourself the right way, doing the right thing, and you know those twelve steps that everyone follows and they talk about. It has to do with accountability, righting your wrongs being honest and so on and so forth, living a moral life. You know, people can be sober and not do those other things. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I don't want to get into it, but you know, it has a crazy. It has a But she does have uh, she does have three months yeah. in rehab. Yeah, she's been to That's great plans, for her. Yeah, passing all of her urine tests and everything else, but you know what that's that's her life. I've, I've gone down this road for a long time. It's been 12 years of this. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard. And most importantly, I have to, you know, it's about my kids. They need, and I don't want to cut a mother out of their life. I certainly don't want to do kids need their parents, but they need sober sure. parents. So, you know, if someone has a chance, they do stay sober. You got to let their parents be part of their life. You know, when I yeah. went to my divorce with Dina, it was animosity more than anything that kept kids from her. I gave Dina everything, the house, and all the equity, everything. I just wanted a relationship with my kids, and that was taken away from me for a little while. I hurt my kids more than anything, and now they talk about it like that. That was really wrong what happened to you. Best, you know, best friends again, all of us. That's a good thing. And Including one of the... Dina. Right. Now that's that's good of you to, to come out and, and add that in. Um, a misconception, and again, I, I've never recovered or been an addict or been in anything of that nature. But the misconception is people are on drugs, they go to rehab and they think it's okay to drink. It's still a big no no to, to even drink, am I right? Absolutely. Some people go to go to rehab for cocaine or, or heroin and they come out and they start drinking, they become an alcoholic. They think you switch from one addiction for another. Some people right. do it with sex, believe it or not. A lot of people go in and they hook up with people. I know, I know that story. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I was tempted to post it on Facebook a couple of times, but no, I'll stay away from 
happened. And it was oh. uh, but you know, people switch addictions, and it's really, really dangerous. You can't, you know, you, you know it's, it's, it's really, and it's an excuse, it really is, because an addiction is an addiction, whether it's shopping, whether it's gambling, whether it's cocaine. I mean, it, it, people switch addictions all the time and say, "Hey, I'm clean." No, you're not. No, right. you're not. Because you're living, you're still in a, living an addictive lifestyle. Get rid of all of it. Change your life because one will lead to the other. It's just a gateway. And guess I what? think it's also hard when you love someone that is suffering from addiction. I mean, people are so quick to say, just walk away. It's hard to walk away sometimes. Well, that was one of the things, Al. That's, that's one of the things I struggle with because people would always say to me, why haven't you left your why haven't you done this? Why don't you give up on a person? And here's my answer. I have helped hundreds and hundreds of people I don't even know. You think I'm going to turn my back on someone that has my children or someone I love or my family members? No, I'm not going to do that. Some people play the tough love card. Yeah, to a certain degree, you have to. You can't enable them and give them money when they, you know, they're using it the wrong way. But you can't turn your back on them. You may want to distance yourself and say, enough is enough, and I'm not going to help if you stay sober. And get so, get sober, and stay sober. But you can't, I'm not the kind of person to turn my back on anybody. Unfortunately, I have to now with the mm-hmm. outsiders, and it breaks my heart that I have to. And you know what? It really, the system really hurt themselves because I helped a lot of people. I saved a lot of lives. You haven't seen the letters I've got. I mean, <laughs> You know what? I, I give a lot. There's a lot of people. I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had quite a few people reach out to me and tell me that you have really impacted their life in a positive way. Oh, I, I could tell you some stories that you wouldn't believe. I, I, I'm very good friends with Tim Ryan and Jennifer Jimenez, who is they're celebrities too. And I have to give them a lot of credit for all the things they do too. There's a lot of people out there that do a lot of good, but then there's the ones that just do it for the celebrity or to make the money and so on and so forth. We don't. We don't. We do a certain we care. A certain doctor. <laughs> uh, so, well, well, one yeah. doctor I do give a lot of credit to, Doctor Drew Pinsky. Yes, I used to I love, love his shows. Him. Yeah, love his shows. I love best him. addiction specialist I've ever encountered in my life. The man is more knowledgeable than anyone I know. The guy is just a tremendous human being. And outside of that show, this man really knows what he's doing. He really does. He is a doctor, and he knows his yeah. SHIT. He really does. His his sincerity comes out in him when you watch the programs. Like you can feel it. You can feel he really cares about. Oh yeah. Curing the addiction. Uh, one of our one of our viewers has a non topic question. Uh oh. Should we give? Should we give? Well, Kim, Allie knows Kim very well. Do we give Kim the floor and see if she wants to type out the question? Yeah. Michael, if she's still there. I wish I had my glasses on. I can't see. Oh, tell me about it. But without my glasses, I'm done. We'll let Kim get it. She's a, she's a good friend of the show, so we're sure it's going to be something pretty good. We're not there. Okay. We won't get worried. <laughs> so what's the question, Kim? Yeah, like you have people out there like Dr. Drew, and it's not so much about selling himself. It's about actually helping people. And he's had a lot of celebrities on. And sometimes the celebrities want to steal the thunder from the show. It's got to be tough. But like I said, he does great work. And it, it's great to watch people that actually want to be recovered. I agree. He's like right. the only doctor that I like to watch on any of those shows. Same. I, I like him <laughs> see, see, what you didn't see him as part of, uh, of celebrity rehab, you didn't see all the camera stuff where Dr. Drew would actually take the time and sit with you and talk to you. Like yeah. Dr. Jen in Family Therapy, she did the same thing. And that's why I love them so much. We're still friends. I can call Dr. Drew right now with any problem I have. And if he's not on a plane or not in a meeting, he will pick up the phone. He's that kind I of see- guy. I that's say we call him up. Thing to have. <laughs> I say let's call him up now. We definitely shouldn't do. <laughs> probably could, but okay. yeah, you know. I'd probably lose my connection if I did. But he yeah, I, I feel you. You get you got to keep the good, especially the good connection. Keep them. I kind of wish you had Doctor Phil on Speed Docs. I'd like to. <laughs> I'd like to bring that one on. <laughs> Doctor Phil. <laughs> so Kim, said, give us our her question. She said, "I'm here. Here we go." So it should be coming up. We'll see it in a moment. And, uh, Should we do a like I said, if it's, I know, right? I'm like excited for it. Make sure it's not coming to like a instant message or anything. It might be. No, it's not. Okay, I, here we go. I thought I thought I saw it pop up before. 
Here it comes. So I used to photograph a model. She swore up and down that she knew you, that you flew her to visit. We never believed her, so I could finally ask you for myself. Who was the model? Yeah. Or maybe she may not want to name. Can we get initials? She's name gonna name? name her. Is she gonna name her? Okay, I just I'm just checking. <laughs> She's calling someone's BS. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Well, listen, if, you know, if I did meet someone, I met them, but uh, I haven't flown many people to meet me anywhere. Um, you know, if someone wanted to fly in and they wanted to have dinner. Annie, Annie, Annie Dominicano. Well, that was a hard one. I'm not I even going to try that one. Know. I don't know if a lot of name Annie Dominicano. Well, uh, sorry, Annie. You've been, you've been outed. By uh, Michael Lohan right here on the end. <laughs> no disrespect, Danny. We'd love you if you're out there. Thanks, Kim, for that. I wonder how many people say stuff like that about you on a daily... Like, has that ever, has that ever affected your relationship that you're in? Funny. I'll give you another story. So, Dean and I are going through... And this was on, I think, the front page of the... Uh, Oh, there comes my prayer card. Just came up. I'm sorry. Oh, there we go. Every, every, I can. Uh-oh. He froze. You might need a second. That you happened to me the other night. It happens sometimes, especially when you, when something else comes up and gets in the way. So we'll hang in there for a minute. Um, I'll tell you what, so far I'm having a blast. I, I <laughs> love this guy. As I thought I would, like, like I said, he's, He's a dude. Things happen. Men get, you know, and actually, wow, he was that quick to jump out and jump into a new screen. My man, he's like a pro at this. Like, no, Welcome God. back. Ali <laughs> Al Al schooled me before we got on the radio. So anyway, on, on this. Anyway, so what happened was when I was going through my divorce with Dean, we were in court one day, and I walked out of the courtroom, and there was a woman there, and she was standing, attractive woman, and she handed me a card. And I looked at it and I said, thank you. It was a real estate card. And I had no reason. I didn't need a real estate agent. But she said, give me a call if you ever need any help finding a home. I guess it's kind of a that I, <laughs> I might need you right now. Out, right? <laughs> I know, so right? One thing led to another. Her name was Virginia. And um, about five or six months later, I was looking for a place because Dean and I were finally splitting up. So I called her up and I said, yeah, I want, I'd like to look at some places up on the North Shore of Long Island. So I met her for lunch one day and we looked at some homes and we st stayed in touch and she had all her properties. And one time she had said, oh, for the 4th of July, we're going to Bayville for a party. Um, I'm going to be with my family and my daughters and would you like to come? So one thing led to another. And I started to go out to lunch with her and see her. And she wanted to get serious. And I said, listen, Virginia, I just got out of jail. I just had my DUI. You know, I'm going to a with Dina. I'm not ready for a relationship. And she respected that. However, by happenstance, about a month or two later, I did meet someone named Erin. And I, Erin went out with me to visit Lindsay. She was in rehab in Utah. I really, Erin and I really connected. And it was all over the news. Wouldn't you know, Virginia went to the New York Post and said, Michael Lohan did me dirty. He was sleeping with me and he met someone else. I never slept with the girl. I was never with her. I hung out with her and her family. But she went into the Post to their office and she spilled the beans saying that we had this affair and this and that. And that. But yeah, like, it does that's happen. probably the biggest thing that ever happened to her. And that, right. <laughs> She's like, I looked at houses with Michael Lohan. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's a sad part because, and it's a good thing in a way, because I can't just go out and meet someone in a bar or in a restaurant or something like that and go home with them because I'm afraid it'll wind up in the paper or they'll get pregnant on purpose or something like that. Not, I'm talking about years ago with my age sure. now. I don't, would never even think of doing that. But when I was single, going through my divorce, I was afraid to do those things. I didn't want to because it would wind up in the paper where someone could say anything. You know? Sure. So you really have to watch yourself. Man, the internet doesn't help either. Everything is a trick of a finger. Uh, another viewer wants to know the strangest experience you have with a fan. Something really wild that happened with oh, somebody. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, I love to know that because you know the fans get 
crazier than the media sometimes. This is really funny that you said that because I just got a call last night from a guy blocked, and now he was on he was on Facebook, um, and he was in a, I don't I don't consider people fans. They're you know I befriend them as friends and give them advice, and this guy had a lot of trouble, and one thing led to another, and he started to get a little radical, so I cut him off. He just called up last night. And he said, "I'm going to kill you, effing this eff. I'm wow. going to kill you." And I keep getting these private calls, and I some of the private calls I have to take because some of my associates call from private numbers, and I'm afraid to pick up the phone now because every time I pick it up and this guy's on, he's like threatening to kill me. So wow. that's probably the weirdest. Is he just thing. saying it straight, like oh, no, monotone, no, or is he saying it in a creepy voice? No, he's, um, he's, it sounds like he's serious. He doesn't know where I live, of course. That's why I don't. But there was one other situation that was in the paper. Um, when I was living in Santa Monica, right on the pier, right where the the pier is with the Ferris wheel and everything, I was Mm -hmm. right on the beach and my parking lot was next to it. Um, and I had, um, I had my car in the parking lot and my car alarm started going off and I went out. Um, I went out to my car, and when I went out to my car to see what was happening, some guy said, you're dead, Lohan, and he came no. after me with a, I, I thought it was a knife, it was a box cutter, and I still have the scar on my arm, it's on my arm, but I put my arm up and I blocked it, I was able to get the box cutter and take him, and they hit him on the car and broke his nose and he took off, but it turned out it was a crazy follower that attacked me in the car door. it was all over the news, it's a Michael Lohan attacked by someone in Santa Monica. No, wow. actually, actually the story he, I heard he, was the story I heard was Michael Lohan attacked guy with box cutter who took it out of his hand and came back. Yeah, right. <laughs> they couldn't get that one wrong because I was the one he took off. I was the one he on me, so. yeah. Did he say what was the actual like trigger that made him like? No, come they at didn't you? get him. They didn't get him. He ran away. He ran down the beach and he got away. Oh. They stopped. The police stopped everybody, all the homeless people and everything. They never got the guy. No. Mm-hmm. That's scary. Yeah, it was, it was creepy. But other fan experiences, no, I mean, I just, no, I just, uh, I've met a lot of people that were, you know, you know, admirers, whatever you want to call them, that were really, really cool people, really good people. I've really met a lot of good people in my life, too, you know. All the, all That's good. It's, the way, it's the way it should be. Like, I don't understand what <laughs> attacking you was going to do to help anybody, except maybe... Put him on the news. This guy rants. He's not even getting on the news. But Jeff, you have to. Honestly, I I look to your page for positive motivation every morning. Yeah. Well, thank you. But, you know, you have to look at it from their point of view, too. And I try to, you know, when I write things, people think I'm writing it about myself. And some people will write back and say, Michael, I'm sorry you're going through this. It's not always about me. Sometimes someone will reach out to me and I'll try to get a message out to other people. So maybe if I touch one life with that passage, and there have been times where people say, Michael, you really, I was in a bad place. And that what you, what you did really inspired me and turned it around for me. But you have to look at it from another perspective, too. Because you know, it's it, it, I, I do things. It, it's healing for me. It's therapeutic for me. And it, I guess some people would think it's selfish. I'm not trying to be selfish, but by doing these things, and I have to say that sometimes I am a little direct at some people. I've tried to change that a lot. I'm the kind of person where if you, I'm going to call it a spade a spade. Right. And <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to tell you the truth. No matter how much it hurts, you know, but I try to do it in the right way. But, um, I mean, I, I think social media is, um, I think it's taking a different turn. I think that, you know, it, it, it could be used in a lot better ways. But um, especially with younger kids now, the exposure, my two little boys, I, you know, I try to limit what they're doing. But they come out with some of these radical things. I'm like, where'd you hear that? And they're like, oh, right. you uh, that? Probably like, Fortnite. <laughs> Uh, they're doing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because they said, leave me alone. Go play Fortnite. Play yeah. PS5, you know, just go away. Let me die. I need some time. But, it's, but um, even in the chats, like the things that like some people talk about in the chats, you're just like, like I know that Jackson will come to me and he's like, what are they talking about? And I'm like, nothing that should be in a chat on Fortnite. Right. <laughs> Don't you love when they come up to you and say, dad or what is this? And you're like, where'd you hear that? 
<laughs> it's always at the worst time too. It's always when you're like doing something else and like you've got to stop and like think about how you want to approach it. <laughs> Or when you have something in your mouth and it's so radical that you spit it out in front of everybody, like <laughs> what'd you say? But, yeah. So we got we got a name correction, a spelling. It was Annie D'Amico, D A I M C O. Annie D'Amico. I know an Annie an Annie D'Amico, but I never flew her down anywhere. She, as a matter of fact, I think she's from Philadelphia. Yeah, I do know Annie, but I never flew her down anywhere. I'm not gonna look her up. No, I'm <laughs> yeah. No. Did you just... see her at an event? You probably passed her at an event. She probably handed you a business no, card. No, 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 no. She actually, she did. She came down to Florida and stuff. I didn't fly her down there or anything, but she came to Florida and we were friends and so on and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right. I didn't know she's a model. I didn't know she's a model though. It, she worked in you know a different industry from what I understand. I think with pets and things like that. I thought you were going to say porn. <laughs> uh, I was no, she's not, no, she's not a porn, no. no, she's, a, she's actually a good person. She, she, sure. she is, she's a good person, Annie. That, when you said model Annie D'Amico, no, but Annie yeah. D'Amico, yeah, but she's not. So, I didn't know she was a model. See, I just fell into the trap. I joked around before you came on. I think it's 15 years ago, 12. Wow. Years. You have good memory. You really do. <laughs> but... I, I said before we came on, like, we're media, and Allie laughs. Like, I don't consider myself media. Me neither. But I just got sucked into the media trap. This girl knows Michael Lohan. She's in a different field, maybe porn. See, I did it, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's, um, no, she worked with pets, I believe, which is kind of okay. affinity for pets, but, yeah. I got to tell you, when pets Allie... Pets and porn. <laughs> pets, pets and porn is a whole different ballgame. Depends <laughs> what you call your pet. But <laughs> <laughs> when, um, when Allie first told me, she said, hey, I spoke to Michael Lohan. He's talking about coming on the show. And I got to admit, I was a little nervous because, like I said, there's stories. And you don't know what to touch on but not to touch on. And we talk a lot about the approach because you deserve the respect that you get. You deserve to be spoke to like every other human being. And even if there's bad stories, it doesn't really matter. So basically in, in coming to us, we love people to feel free to say whatever they want. Give us one thing about yourself. Nothing like controversial. One thing about yourself that you really want people to hear right to their face. Like I'm this, or this drives me something that just is really great about you that people really need to know. That's a good one. Thank you. I, I, I so honestly, there's so much. I mean, I struggle not with addiction or anything like that, but I struggle with things in my life. I, you know, there's certain things in my life that I have my own little secrets, so to speak. Um, nothing with about my gender or anything like that, but just things that in my life that. Um, I mean, listen, when you're on a spiritual path. And you really I went to Bible college, became a minister. I, I, you know, I worked with Teen Challenge for a while, and I did all these things. You're not supposed to, you know, you're supposed to be totally open about everything in your life. And, and but I can't do that. I can't. Sure. There's certain things I, I just don't want to hurt people. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say things that you know, might offend somebody or, or things that, um, that I, I just uh, that I'm not proud of. You know, I, there's there's things that you know. I just let, let sleeping dogs lie, and if they yeah. ever have to wake up, they'll wake up when I go and poke them. That's good. I actually like that a lot. Like everybody assumes that, again, from what you've been through and your famous family. No offense, because you said earlier it's not about that, but your famous family. Everybody always thinks it's always on the attack. Michael Lohan's always on guard, always going to attack somebody, or if you come at him, he's going to say something. And that's great that you show, you admit there's a little bit of a vulnerability, but it's also a good piece of you that just knows how to channel it and relax it. And I tell you what, that is a road to recovery and a road to just fixing and righting wrongs that a lot of people can't put a finger on. It's incredible. I give you a lot of credit. I really do. It, it's great. I, you know, Jeff, I, I hate to say it takes a lot of practice, but it does. I mean, after a sure. while, you just start to, to deal with it. So come, you, you swerve with the curve, you know, you, you learn, you know, to, to dodge those pitches that are going to hit you. And you don't, you don't always have to swing at them. I don't have to swing back when people 
to say anymore. I know how to let them go. You know, you have to buy that pitch sometimes. You don't have to swing at it. Just let it go. And, you know, it was a ball. And, you know, so I just, uh, I, I, it took a lot of learning. You know, I used to be very reactive. You know, if someone said something, came right back at him. Dina, too, I feel really, some of the things that I said in reaction to what she did, and exposing things with tapes and things like that, I thought it was, you know what, I was trying to justify myself and prove my point the wrong way. You don't have to do it that way. And I'll say it publicly now. I apologize to Dina for exposing certain things. I apologize to Kate for exposing things. I suppose, you know, even other people I did it too. But the only one I really, that I should be interested in is exposing myself. That's it. You know, with it being, you know, I, I, God takes care of everything. When it's time, he levels that playing field. I don't have to do that. I'm not God. I'm certainly not God, and I'm no saint. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. We strive to be as perfect as we can, but we'll never be perfect. We'll always make mistakes. We'll always have struggles. We'll always have to right our wrongs if we're good enough to do that, because a lot of people don't, because they're not man enough or I have to say woman enough, but they're not, they're, not, they're not good enough to do that. You know, so it's been a long time. I'm 62 now. I don't know how much more time I have on my clock. God, God willing, he's going to keep me around so I can do some more good and help raise my boys. And oh, your you boys know. are going to keep you young. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> or kill me. One of the other. <laughs> I coach them in basketball. coach them in football. I you wow. know, dress them in the morning, get them to school. I go to lunch with them on Tuesdays and Thursdays and they've worked a lot. But things I didn't do with my kids before that I wish I would have done. You know, that's the thing. When I was younger, talking about being material, I worked on the floor at the New York Commodity Exchange for 11 years. I got up at 4 in the morning, and I left at 5, and I was on the floor by 6.30, getting ready to trade. And I didn't leave the floor. The, the bell rang at 4 o'clock, to end. I didn't get home until 6.30. So I woke up in the morning, didn't see Dean and the kids, got home at 6.30, just having dinner, did some homework with them, played with them. I had all weekend with them. But I had no time for my family. It was all about work to make money. I'm sorry. <laughs> so my two New York kids. Can I just put them in? Yeah, do your thing. You're right ahead, girl. Mine have actually going back sex, upstairs. Sex just opened her eyes, looked at so, me, and was like, yeah, no. <laughs> so you learn from that. And that's why I give my kids more time now when I try to be more attentive to make up for the things that I didn't do before. Sometimes you make sacrifices we think are for the good, but they're not because, you know what, it's not about spending all the time working and you got to give time to your family. Yeah, it's a tough divide. It's, you know, you, you know you got to go out and make the money, provide them a certain life. Sometimes it takes too much of your life. So, now she says... We let it take, you know. We, 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 right. Every, everything in life is about choices. It's not about... Everyone has a choice to make. You can take this, you can either take this road or that road. You can make, decide to do this or that. And then we have to deal with the choices that we make, just like addiction, you know. Everyone says, well, they can't beat addiction, this and that. It's, a, it's hard for them. Look, at, I know people that went to treatment that have been using for a year, five years, or ten years. And they went to treatment one time and got it right. I know people that took five times ago, ten times, or fifteen. What was the difference the first time? That, and what did they learn the first time that they didn't learn the last time? It was the same all along. They just decided to stop. Enough was enough. You know, I don't want to hear, well, I, you know, I got this piece of the puzzle at the last minute. That was my jewel or my treasure. And it's a, no, I'm sorry. It's a choice. It's all a choice. That's true. Absolutely. Um, I guess I shouldn't put these up. Kim told me she sent me pictures of this model. I'll hold them and maybe send them to Mike. Maybe I'll send them to Michael in private later. I can't put them up there. God forbid she catches this on the show somehow. I, I don't have money to get sued. Part Sherlock Holmes here. She wants but answers. I just said I know. I know Annie D'Amico. Yeah, she. I don't know if Kim, if you missed that, he did come back and say he didn't know her. So it's probably yeah. the same. But he just said he never flew her down there. But he does know. That's a big difference between knowing somebody and flying them somewhere. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Well, well on, okay. on a different topic. What did she say? I'm not gonna what? Did she say? She says not gonna happen. Oliver's a girl's not gonna catch her picture on here, but you never know. <laughs> Whatever. 
<laughs> Just wondering. So, some talk in the talk shows this morning with Jamie Lee Curtis about Freaky Friday 2. Yeah, well, you know. What do we know? I can, I can talk about it because I didn't say it. You know, there's right. some certain things that we talk about in my family that we don't talk about in public. And Jamie said it. And I guess I'm working on Freaky Friday too, which I think will be amazing. Jamie is an incredible lady. She's, She's awesome. an incredible woman. Um, I love yeah, her. Just like she was like a second mom to Lindsay's like, But then again, Nancy Myers was. There's a lot of people in Lindsay's life that have been really supportive right to the right till now. You know, good, bad, or indifferent. And Jamie is just a stellar human being. Lisa Ann Walters, another one, uh, played uh, played the, the nanny in, in the parent trap. Another yeah. one, Ch- Jesse. She is, I still talk to Lisa. She's a great lady. There's a lot of good people that she's encountered and worked with in her life. Jamie is one of them. And, um, and I guess you're going to lead into Mean Girls, too, because right. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's been the press, too. There's no parent trap. I don't know who said that, but um, I don't think. They uh, you know what happened? Trap. I saw a flyer and I think I wanted it to happen. So when I saw the flyer for it and saw that Lindsay was like older in the like flyer, I was like, oh, my gosh, this might be a thing. And if I put it into the universe enough, maybe it will happen. <laughs> you never you never know. But I don't think Disney would ever try to remake The Parent Trap for a third time. Uh, do I think that Mean Girls would be an amazing remake? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's been a little while. If I guess if Tina Fey in the studio come up with the right numbers, that they have a heck of a cast. I mean, yeah. Lacey, Amanda. And, uh, I just watched it the other day. It is a but, classic. I I love cast. Lacey. I love Lacey. Like I adore her. I think she's just Lacey's gorgeous. A great so girl. She's a great girl. No, but you know, I've had I, I've been able. You know, I, I I talked to Lacey in the past and stuff. I didn't know the other girls that much. Tara said hi. She's, she's, she's very good friends with, with a friend of mine named Jackie, um, Jackie Watson, and um, they talk. They're very close. Um, but Lacey, they were all good kids, really good kids, had a lot of fun. They were still young and innocent at that point, and was getting into trouble. Um, but that was a true success story, and, and Tina Fey did a great job. I mean, it's it's iconic. I mean, look at, I mean, it, it's amazing, you know, just it, just what, what's come of that. I don't know that making a, a musical out of it was the greatest thing in the world. I, I don't, mm. you know, don't know how it did, but I think making a, a remake with that cast could only be oh, a yeah. success. Only be a success. So you know what, studio, pay up like you should. <laughs> exactly. It's Maybe. a guilty pleasure for me because, like, my buddies are always like, "You like Mean Girls?" And even my wife's like, "Huh?" I'm like, "Yeah, I like that movie." I do. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know what, the studios make hundreds of millions, if not billions, of dollars on movies, and they want to be so stingy with the people that are making them the money. Don't sure. be stingy. Pay up. You're making. Either. I mean, so. Oh, a sequel would definitely. I mean, oh, kill, oh, it would kill bank, it. Oh, yeah. Kill it. I mean, look what they did. I never thought that they they do so so well with Top Gun with Maverick, but look at oh, what they wow. did that movie. That was incredible. incredible. Yeah. You have a lot of franchises out there that do well, but I don't think that Mean Girls could take more than a second remake. But I think a remake would be amazing. I love it. Um, yeah. So this one goes out to both Allie and Michael together. Because Howie talked about where you guys met. One of our viewers wants to know exactly what was pillow fighting. What was this? What was this pillow fighting event all about? <laughs> yeah, fun question. Okay, so Damon Feldman had a. Tell the truth, Allie. We were in a hotel room one night. <laughs> we were getting along. Michael flew her down to Florida. <laughs> and yeah, so we started to break out the pillow. <laughs> we won't talk about anything after that. I'm vicious with the pillow, but <laughs> David no, put together David this Allen. pillow fight with Octomom and Shyla. And it was just one of those wild rides that you just were part of. And we were sitting at, we, uh, the, I don't even remember where the pillow fight was. It was, was like it, a, was it, it was like a was warehouse. It, yeah, yeah, it was David April. Ma- and April Marger was there. Yeah, I'm trying yep. to think who else. Uh, a lot of people there. Yeah, yeah there was there. a ton of people there. Yeah, yeah, he was. It, it, that was yeah. Damon picked some really weird places to have some of the 
So, <laughs> but he, and listen, he pulled it off. Look at his brother. Look at what David is doing now. David owns bare knuckle boxing. God yeah. bless him. What a good guy. And, and I, you want to talk about a good guy? He's a great guy. He really is. Dave, David Feldman, he's a really good guy. And I guess he's David actually was, coming on the show in a couple weeks. Is he? Will you tell him? Damon will be, yeah. Sure, absolutely. Damon or David? Damon. Damon. Damon, the, the brother, the, the, yep. the uh, celebrity boxing. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I, I was one of the people that launched it with him. He's um, Damon and I worked together for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. He's overcome a lot of things in his life, too. I give him a lot of credit for what he's overcome. He's, I know. He, he, he was about- so great. Like, even with this show, when he found out that I was doing this, he was one of the first ones that wrote me and was like, uh, congrats on doing your thing. Like I'm behind you. And I was like, you know, I want you to come on. And he's like, well, I don't really like interviews, but I will. Oh, he so- likes interviews. You tell him I yeah. that too. <laughs> One thing about Damon is Damon may be a real boxer. He's a fighter, but Damon is a fighter. Damon will fight to the end to, to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. He perseveres. And I give him a lot of credit for that. That's great. And now I'm going to check out the brother and maybe try to get him on as well to talk about you know, bare knuckles things. I, I just love stuff like that. And, and then any kind of entertainment is fun. Fighting entertainment is fun. I'm into anything. I, I'm up for anything. I, I love stuff like that. And when Allie told me that she was in Damon's events and she met you through that, I'm like, that, that's my kind of stuff. I'm all about that. Yeah. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of, I have to say some of the events he did were, we had really did have a lot of fun. We did Jeremy Loper, another radio host that was from your area. He's in, I think he's in Ohio now, Illinois or something. But Jeremy was a, a disc jockey and a, a radio host, and uh, we became very friendly too. He was, uh, we, we had some matches lined up too. That's awesome. Yeah. You, you ever going to duke him out again? <laughs> At this stage of my life, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I like, I, you know, try to stay in shape and go to the gym, but I don't know. You know, I, you want to give it your best when you're fighting, and I don't. You know, I don't know what my best would be these days, and I have to preserve. Because when I get in there, I'm serious. I'm not doing sure. it. it's no show. When you're in there, you're fighting. You, you right. Know, and you don't want to hurt someone, and you don't want to hurt yourself. I mean, but at this stage of the game, and back then, yeah, you, you wanted. Who did I? Who did I box? I boxed a guy named Rocco, a, D, uh, a radio host mm-hmm. um, from Philly, and the guy had kept hit me below the belt. I lost my crap, and I just picked him up and body slammed. <laughs> but you said you used to be like when you were younger you're all about being an athlete what was your sport what was a, your, your big sport Ho- hockey and lacrosse both. that's great yeah. hockey i love hockey great sport. so my my nephew plays for the orlando solar bears i think he got drafted to um to tampa bay lightning my brother was a professional lacrosse player. my brother was a three-time my brother scott was a three-time all-american at brown University, and then he, he uh, got a job on Wall Street, but he did play professional pros. Um, I have another cousin that's a professional golfer, so we've got some we've got some professional athletes in my family. Man, you got the great uh, actors, I, the singers, the athletes. Man, that's telling you, it's flowing in that Lohan family. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have me. <laughs> I, I was all county in lacrosse, but that's as far as I got. That's about it. Yeah, but you also got a gift of the gab a little bit. Like you, you talk it good, and like I said, now something that a lot of people can't accomplish is reaching others. And like Allie said, and, and I see where people say, you know, Michael was important to me recovering. Michael was important in my life and the words he says and the stories he tells. That's big, dude. You, you can't put a price on that movie star, rock star, athlete. You can't put a price on helping people turn around and get better. That to me is like the most important thing you can do in life. So, Well, I, you know what? The two most important things in my life, and I think most, most people, family and what you can do to help other people that's i mean there's no better there's no better badge to wear than being a good father good husband good, good, and a good person you can't just you can't put a price tag on saving someone's life or changing someone's life yeah your growth even in the time that i've known you has just been amazing i mean it really has well thank you Ellie, and I, I really appreciate you guys having I'd love to see the pictures you were talking about before that you can't. <laughs> Jeff, you gonna show us some pictures? Um, of this model? 
And he said, that's what you want to say? Yeah, well, well, might as well. Is that, is that what she sent a picture of the model? She, yeah, she sent two yeah. pictures two pictures of this model. I guess this is Annie. I don't know if that's her, if you really see it with the glare. Yeah, that is oh. Annie. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, there's, pretty. A, there's no girl, one. Very pretty girl. Yeah, very pretty girl. Annie's yeah. pretty. No glare in there. She's a nice girl. She she went through her own issues in her life, too. And she was um, just a good person. Good. I have nothing bad to say about Annie at all. Excellent. Nothing. Unlike Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> No, what I is sleep with Virginia. Right, poor Virginia. <laughs> You're famous for not sleeping with Michael Lohan. I guess we're both famous for the no, same I, thing. I won't say that about Annie, though. <laughs> Whoa, man. Whoa. <laughs> I was going to say, me and Virginia are famous for the same thing. We did not sleep with Michael Lohan. And we're, oh, no. we're famous for it. <laughs> it's never too late. No, I'm <laughs> You gotta fly me down to wherever you're at. Yeah, we don't right. say where you're at because you never know who. You never know who sets tell off your car. Tell me now. You just call TMZ or Newsweek and just tell them that it happened. <laughs> no, listen, Harvey would love to get a piece of this interview. I'll tell you that much. I'm sure he could put a spin on it too. He's done that quite quite a few times as well. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Michael Lohan comes out with podcast. <laughs> My wife would murder me. Yeah. No, you know, so, listen, they all have their job to do. They just do it differently. Look at Perez Hill, you know, what his tone was when he started. And, yeah. You know, you know, so people, you know, they have their own agendas. And you and know it, what? It worked, it worked for them, didn't it? It got yeah, them it the did. notoriety that they wanted. No matter how rude, crude, or abusive they were, it worked for them. So, and I say that, like, about sports. There was a guy, they always start these trade rumors and a holdout rumor, and who doesn't want to play where? They have to. they got to sell something. They got to print something, so they're they're putting it out. Like you said, what a have you have you have you made it? Have you gone on the celebrity tour bus? Like, have you gone on there or you like mean TMZ? TM I haven't gone on the bus, but I've been on you know I've been on Sunset or you know in in Hollywood. Yeah, like has the bus stopped and, and, and like the, Oh yeah, yeah. When you're out there all the time. I mean, actually, the last time it happened, I was with Stephen Baldwin. We were walking down the street and they. Accosted us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, not to sound naive, what is this TMZ you speak of? I never heard of it. Oh, really? <laughs> Let me Google it. You'll find out. Who they are. <laughs> that wasn't me. That was Jeff. <laughs> you know, they used to have a really good guy there. His name was Mike Walters. Michael started. He left and started the blast. He was one of the people that started TMZ with them. He was really? one of the founders, but he yeah. uh, he left and did the play. And there was another website called X17 that was another good one. They were one of the pioneers in that industry that TMZ kind of took over. But yeah, X17 was another good people. TMZ's there. like it branched out now. They're doing sports. Yeah. They have well, a bunch of different Harvey, shows. Harvey's a genius. I mean, yeah. that, you know, I'll tell you a funny story about that too. So Harvey... He was always saying rotten things about me and my daughter and stuff like that. And one day, remember, he was hosting the People's Court at mm -hmm. one time? Yeah, yeah. He was in Santa Monica at the promenade with all the people around him, you know, talking about People's Court. And I walked up behind him. He didn't know I was there. And he had just said something bad a couple of days before about Lindsay or myself. Oh, and, I, and I went behind him and I put my hand on his neck and I grabbed him back like as hard as I could. Have I said, hey, Harvey, how are you? And he's looking at me. <laughs> and he just about crapped in his pants. I mean, <laughs> but after a while, we learned to we learned to get along with each other. Uh, after I broke down their door one time, they did get security at the front door. I, and I did. I, I'm the reason you I You broke down TMZ's door? I kicked the door in. Right, right <laughs> on the set. Yep, I did. Yeah, he'll tell you uh, that. Yep, I should, certainly did. I got to see Listen, footage. You can mess with me. Don't mess with my family. Don't yeah. lie about my family. Shepard Smith did that once. Look it up when I was being interviewed by him on Fox. And Shep Smith said something derogatory. And I literally chased him around the desk. Wow. <laughs> That's good defense, though. It's good to have a, a father yeah, like but, that in your corner. <laughs> well, you know, listen. I was, like I said, I was reactive at one time. And I didn't. Put up with that, I, you know. With age, you learn to you get seasoned. You're, you know, you learn to do things differently. And you look at the other side of people that are doing their reporting. They want to create drama. People don't like nice stories. They don't like success stories. You don't see stories about people doing.
doing these wonderful things. Even with the lottery, look, the guy won $2.1 billion. They have to twist that. It's all about someone stealing the ticket and so on and so forth. I so read that. Sell. That's crazy. But it's what? drama. Drama sells, sex sells, all that stuff sells. They don't want a nice story, but that's their job. That's their job. That's how a lot of these people made their lip. Jerry Springer and Maury Povich and, and even Geraldo Rivera one time. But look at them now. Geraldo, I respect Geraldo more than most newscasters. I love that guy. He's so, he's, um, I kind of followed what he did in a lot of ways. I speak my mind. I speak the truth. And if someone has something to say that's not right, I'm going to confront them on it. And that's how Geraldo is. He's, there's some really good people out there. They're not patsies. And I respect right. him. I'm a man's man. I respect him and I respect a lot of the people like him. He put his neck on the line with the um, the vaults. Remember the vaults? He was Al Capone's oh, yeah. vaults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Put, put his neck on the line, said he had him, went in there, didn't have him, didn't back down, didn't cut the film. He's like, I haven't had, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Came right out and said, I mean, that, yeah. that takes the guts. But that's, I mean, not the date ourselves not to age ourselves but that was the way it was when we were younger guys mike it was being legit being honest putting no, your neck out there and, and just doing it and I, if you I failed agree. you failed you know? that's right just take it like a man take it on the chin am i hearing things or is there a dog barking in the back my dog is was doing that's good all of a sudden at the I, end i thought it was my dog no. <laughs> I'm letting y'all know my little dog is laying right next to me like a little puppy angel. Just yeah, well, my doggies, are, my doggies are mommy's boys and mommy's girls. So mommy must be sleeping now. They're running around the house losing. Yeah, it, so. really. well, that sounds like Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's Hannah you hear, and she's losing because mommy's probably in bed or something. Right. So. That's good ears, though. You're hearing right. You're not. You're not going crazy. It's like what's going. On? You probably saw my face going like. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> to I'm so to used to it between the Fortnite and the dogs. Like, I'm just used to it. <laughs> he that's called your dog, dog a rat. It's, it's oh, a rat. No, the rat. Think about Allie's dog. What's your dog a rat? <laughs> she doesn't that's, take well to that. Six does not me. like being called that a rat. That is me. I actually uh, got into I I became a little dog guy as I got older. I tend to like the little ones. It's less work. Less mm. dragging me around the house. I'm I'm like you said, you don't, your body doesn't age as well. I'm getting brittle. <laughs> it happens part of life. That's why I got, that's why I got into the wellness business to try to reverse the process a little bit. And there are things that work. I'll tell you that much. There really are. I, have to hit you up for coming in. I need it. I know. Right. I've been, I've been sick. I mean, I just, I just, um, I just, I, I had, did you ever hear of gout when you have your gas? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, I had a case of gout. Um, probably about three weeks ago, and I first I got it in my elbow. My elbow was sore, and then it went to my other elbow, and then I got it in my right hand, and I couldn't even close my hand. And I woke oh, up the next morning, and I couldn't stand out of bed. My legs were, my ankles were so swollen. I went and I got an IV treatment with certain vitamins in it. By the time I walked out, I was seventy or eighty percent better. The next day, I was all better. So there's things wow. out there people don't know about cryotherapy and, and infrared sauna and, um, and uh, hyperbaric chambers, things that really, really, there's something called NAD, not, uh, nicot nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, it's an IV, IV injection. It's actually the fluid inside your cells that depletes as you get older. When you infuse that into your system, it actually slows your aging process down. The stuff is wow. amazing. I so like people that. don't know about this stuff, but unfortunately, insurance doesn't cover it, so it's cash pay, and a lot of people can't do it because it's expensive. Like yeah. NAD is five hundred dollars for an IV, but yeah. it costs a lot less. But they mark it up. But, um, well, I got to tell you, being a um, being from right outside of Philadelphia, being an Eagles fan, whatever they gave Patrick Mahomes ankle at halftime, sure didn't make a difference. He was <laughs> he was writhing in pain. It's called cortisone. Cortisone. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Somebody there's so it. many things out there. I mean, I'm working with a company now that's up from your area. It's, um, it's called Mile High Training, and they build these things called altitude chambers. Have you ever heard of that? No. Yes, wow. actually, I have I, a little bit. Mm -hmm. So this guy, Matt Fermato, owns a company in and now, so you heard of a hyperbaric chamber. A hyperbaric chamber is when you go inside, it forces oxygen into your system and promotes your, your cell development and 
blood flow. It forces oxygen into your body to help heal, right? Yeah. Well, I have a, 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 um, an altitude chamber, which is hypoxic chambers, which depletes the oxygen out. So when you're inside it, your body is working at a higher rate to try to get oxygen in. It's like working out up in the Alps or in the Rockies at okay. a higher elevation. So your body is producing more red blood cells and your stamina, endurance, and, and even healing, muscle development, tissue development. It's, it's amazing what they do. So there's a lot of things out there people should really look into because it's all about health and wellness and trying to get people better. It helps with anxiety, depression, a lot of other things too that people don't realize. Instead, doctors put them on, instead of doing this, they put them on medication, which makes the problem worse because they never get them right anyway. So. Right. Now, where then, now where yeah. are they located? Are they just on the East Coast or? No, they're all over. They're all over. Look up um, altitude training or look up hypoxic training or wellness centers. There's a couple of good wellness centers out there. The one I the one I had was actually bought by a public company in Florida. And there is actually a friend of mine. Um, you might want to look it up. He's in your area. It's called Impact Zone Gym. His name is David Palladino. That's an amazing gym. And he's putting an altitude chamber in there. So another example is if you go... Uh, if you're in an altitude chamber on a treadmill, if you, you're on that treadmill for a half an hour, it's like running for over an hour. So you're mm -hmm. working less time but accomplishing more. But um, I like that. Yeah, David's in Norwood, New Jersey, I believe, but he's opening in Montclair, too. But he's got an amazing gym, tons of That would be so fun for us to do a live show and go <laughs> in that. He would love, he'd probably love to have you up there. He's yeah. a really good guy. Really, David. David is really. Listen, good guy. we can go do that and then go after and go get matching tattoos. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I like that whole show. I'm, I'm loving that right there. <laughs> there you go. I, just let me know. Make the phone I like it. So, uh, so what's next, Michael? You got like so you got a lot going on. You you got the wellness thing and all. Is there anything? new you want to dive into or you think you're at the point now where everything's coming along just the way you like it yeah no no there's always things we want to change in life and, you know things we want to accomplish i really want to you know i know you know helping people with wellness and prolonging you know their, 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 their lifespan and illnesses so we can spend more time with the families that's important however yeah i still want to do something that really makes a big difference and when i'm working on something right now with our company it's um it's uh it's called altitude water. You can look it up. It actually takes humidity out of the air and converts it to drinking water, and we can get it to people that don't have water. I was on the phone with the former granddaughter of the president of the Congo today, and um, they have a real bad problem out there, as does Mexico and a lot of other, India. A lot of these kids die. I mean, it's one of the biggest problems is water to drink. People don't have clean water to drink. And then you have all these organizations out there that raise money, and they do whatever they can, but they put a lot of money into their administrative costs. These machines work on solar, electricity, or on generator. You can put it anywhere in the desert. As long as there's moisture, it'll take the moisture out of the air and convert it to pure drinking water. Wow. So that's, wow, that's cool. I've been, I've been working on that uh, a lot lately. That's going to be in the tabloid. Michael Lohan's water got wet. I got wet from Michael Lohan's water. Get him! <laughs> there, there's some pretty big, there's some pretty big celebrities that we're meeting with in the next couple of months. That Speaking we'll of water, Jeff, your beard's looking pretty moist. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't think I was going to let that go. Go ahead. Do the little spiel real quick. Real quick, we have Michael. It's one of our sponsors. We have a great company, local company that makes beard products. It is called the Moist Collective. It's got a great name. Um, go to www.rumoist.com. Use the code YOSHO20. Save 20% on your purchase. They ship all throughout the country. Are you moist? The Moist Collective beard products made right here locally in PA. Michael Lohan does not have a beard, great, but he's going to give it a thumbs up. Great tagline. Oh, this is my son Logan. Say hi, Logan. Hey, hi, Brian, Logan. How are we doing? To my little eight year old, my buddy. His first live appearance. <laughs> yes. No, he was actually, in, he, it wasn't fully for Christmas. He had they had a little scene in there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Lizzie, Lizzie put them in the movie. That's uh, nice. That's great. Yep. Anyway. But no beard yet for me. I think some of it, one of his pets, he likes petting me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I, 
I feel like my son does the same thing. We'll be standing there and he's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's time to go. I want your attention. Yeah. Yeah. We just have kids just like popping on this show. Jewel's daughter does it. And <laughs> kids love popping. Here's one. Here's here. Here's here. Here's, looks like yours a little bit, Ellie. There we go. Look at that little That's Milo. And then here's Kylo. Here's Kylo. They look like twins. See? They do. Oh, my God. Aww. <laughs> I love dogs. Yeah, so do we. we love so do I. Yeah. We're, a, we're a pet friendly, kid friendly show. Jeff's language is getting better. So we're getting there. Slowly but surely. Except in tagline. Exactly. Well, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what. Um, out of your son is there, and we'll give you some time to spend with him. We'll let you go. And thank you so much for coming on. This has been great. I told Ali I was very excited and, and definitely nailed it, the hammer. And nailed, nailed, nailed it with the hammer. <laughs> well, well, thank you very much for having me. You guys are great. And tell Damon I said hello when he's on the show with you. Definitely. We and we look forward to having you back on in the future. Thanks, honey. God bless yes, you. Yes, definitely. If you ever need anything, let me know. Sure. Including, thank you. Spon including sponsors. We can talk about that off camera. Okay. okay That's the good. I thank said we did so the moisture. We got them coming. I may have to shave my beard. I'll do it if I have to. If it's yeah. a soft skin collective, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Lohan, everybody. Let's give him a round of applause. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Bye -bye. Lots of love. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. That was terrific. And you know, Yeah, he's so nice. Coming into it, like you said, being, being Michael Lohan. And you assume what the media feeds you, et cetera. And me and you had a lot of talks about it. He said, look, you know, you're like, I know this guy. He's not this. He's not that. And I don't want us to treat him like this and that. And I'm okay with that. You know how we are on this show. We, we treat the guests like gold because they are. And they, it's they like whatever you kind of read in the media, your mind automatically goes there. Right. So let's say that something comes out, even if it's not, the way it went down, like a lot of the things that he was talking about, it's still in your head. So somebody that just caught that, they're going by that for the whole convert, like for their whole judgment about him. Exactly. See, Kim, we're informative as well. The question you had waited for years, we bring it to you. So we do here on this program. We answer those questions. <laughs> right. We we answer the the, the soft rooted questions. I always say we don't do hard hitting. We really don't. And I wasn't I wasn't about to because he said everything's off the table. Ask. Get in there. Yeah, there's things that everybody would love to ask. But you just really don't. I mean, here's a man who his kids are there. He's with his dogs. He's at his house. He's going to come on here. He's going to talk about a lot of things. Yeah, show him the respect of that. And like I said, he turned out to be such a cool guy. My wife's like, you hear the stories, how are you going to handle them? Like, I'm going to handle them like every other guest. Put my questions in the line, ask things that he had discussed with Allie that it's okay to talk about. And if there's something that wasn't, he said, I can't go there. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's perfect. Yeah, I, I think it went great. I think so, too. I think he's, he's so uh, nice. Like, even with the sponsor thing, like, uh, I didn't even really, like, throw that out there, but he that's awesome. Oh, tabloid news. Six has a boyfriend. <laughs> well, Hannah might be jealous because that night that everybody was here, Hannah was getting down with everybody. <laughs> but it's it. what I love doing about this, this show and, and this kind of format. Like I said, there's people out there who they want to run and start a podcast just so they could bad mouth and run their mouth about their country and their government and people and race. There's a few out there like me who one day said, hey, you know what? I kind of enjoy this. Let's have talent on who has things to offer. And not, you know, not only is he, yeah, okay, he's Lindsay's dad. Okay. Now he's been in shows and whatever. But now he's in this company that's trying to make water out of, like, the air to get water to the needy. You know, Hannah's going to love that. <laughs> and, like, he's doing the rehab things and, and motivational speaking. Like I said, people have reached out to you. People have commented on my post. And Michael spoke about my recovery, and that meant the world to me. You know, it's yeah, like, he's helped a lot of people with yeah. the recovery and just 
people that are having issues, he's he's pretty motivational. Like his, he posts every morning, and every yeah. morning I'm like, what's he gonna say today? Like, right? okay, this applies to my day. <laughs> I had to twist him a little bit to get get him to accept my Facebook friendship, but he's there now. And and it's funny because as soon as you become a friend with a guy like that on Facebook, you, you just look into what he talks about. And like I said, a lot of great encouraging words, positive, and it's good to wake up to that kind of stuff. And like even me, everybody's like, oh, you're always so funny on Facebook. Some days you wake up, I'm like, oh, I don't feel like being funny. But you do because people are, are used to it. And like Kami says, you know, there's just some days, but people look forward to the words of encouragement. Ali, you do. Like you said, like I look forward to his words. He puts them out there and, and it's great. I thought he was terrific. I, you know, hit the... I'm all about people that are moving forward and doing things positive to move forward. Everybody has a past. Everybody's done things that, you know, they wish had been different. But at the same time, like you have to learn from it and be a better person and a better version of yourself each and every day. Right. It could be, it's, it's easy. He definitely to, speaks of that. Right. It's easy to stay down and say, well, see, they beat me down. I guess I'm this and I'm just going to stay here and always be that. No, there's no need for it. And he shows you that there's a way out of it. And that's terrific. I, I couldn't be happy for him. I am kind of sad. And I warned out ahead of time. The results of the power graphs will come out horrible on these. But I'm telling you, everything he said is he passed them all. They put them up against the dreaded polygraphs and the stress test and all. And he nailed it. The results are there. I got and the results. I don't results. know if every, like, I don't know if you could really hear him because he kind of mm. went out a little bit, like, as he said it. But I was talking to him earlier, and the reason that he took that plea was because it was right when Lindsay was relaunching her career. Right. So, I mean, like, he could have fought that. And it could have been a long process. And he probably, in the end, could have beat it. But he chose not even to do that and put his family through it. Exactly. And yeah. when he mentioned about Lindsay does her thing, he's never asked for money. He said, going through that litigation will cost X amount. It's not like he said, well, I'm not worried about it. Lindsay can probably help me with that. Didn't do any of that. He just, you know, took the high... Man, like blue. Took the high road and, you know, it is what it is. And, and her past things in life. And Did you said, die or... Did you dye your beard blue last night? No, it's the, um, there's a mat. I lift myself up on a couple of like cushions. If not, I come down like this. And the one of them is like blue. It's like a rubber mat. I had my hands under it, I guess. And just, Whenever I see blue dye, I think of uh, Grown Ups too. when he's in the pool and he pees in the pool. And the yes. kid's like, you're so <laughs> embarrassing. Um. I'll have to show you a picture of when I was Papa Smurf for a Halloween episode of the show here. We're going to talk about blue dye. Blue dye was all over the desk and all for days. It was a disaster. Fun. Yeah, everybody around Halloween, they're like, why don't you do this one? And why don't you do that one where they're like full colored? I'm like, yeah, because I don't feel like having to take that off and having Ugh. that color literally everywhere. Grueling. It is the worst. Non low hand comment, but tell Allie to come photo shoot with me. Right. Oh, I would love to. I'm right? waiting for you to ask. I would love to. Kim, I got to tell you, I would love that too. You're a superstar. Your photography is phenomenal. Your pictures are always great. Congratulations on the magazine project, etc. It's it's just all wonderful. You do great work, and we're like thrilled to have you as our part of our little family and come on and comment with us and watch us. You know, we're so many great people out there with talent that we love and we love promoting it, et cetera. And um, the great shots you did with Mandy Marie, who was on our program, you know, you, you do excellent work and you deserve to be credited for that excellent work. And like I said, I'm here to kiss butt. If you're talented, I will kiss your butt. I got no <laughs> shame about it. <laughs> I know. The only person who's super talented on this show is butt I don't kiss is my own. Let's face it. I'm great. <laughs> I'll go low hand, I'll tell you. Uh, this story, real quick before we get off the air. Allie hit me with it. I didn't even know it happened, but I predicted it would happen. Blink-182 forced to once again delay dates and postpone a concert over Travis Barker's finger injury. Uh, you know, this time... Oh, absolutely. You're, you're very welcome. 
we love you too. We, we really do. We love people to take the time and hang out with us. Uh, but I had predicted it. Blink-182 always manages to slam the brakes on tours, always falls on Travis. You and did call he's... that one. You did call it. I did. And we got to find that because I want to short of that, Dennis. I want to short of me predicting. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I love Blink. I love Travis. I love the, the band. But I, I knew this was great. It always seems to happen. And now with tickets, two, three, four hundred hours a piece, this is a pretty big blow. Well, all I can say is there's another band with a very Blink-182 vibe that will be coming on the Yo! Show. So if you can't see Blink-182, check out 408. Yeah, 408 will be on the program. It's one of those that I didn't quite get in the lineup yet. Uh, but 408 is coming on. They said FBS band is going to join us. We do have a, a lineup of great stuff. We come back. Uh, next week, we got another great one. Another person who said, I'm going to come out and, and speak my mind. I don't know what she's so got, but, but we're excited. The amazing Brie Teller, um, Chris Merrill from American Idol, also a local girl, and she's fantastic. She's going to be on the program March 15th, as we mentioned. Celebrity Boxing's own creator, Mr. Damon Feldman. March 22nd, actually changed that. That is FBS band. I forgot to change that. that. I know. I and. I take full responsibility for the whole horror story thing. It was my fault. But because, sorry. like, and no offense to the ladies who will be doing it with us, but FDS finally acknowledged it and said, okay, we'll take that date. It's tough to say no to it. <laughs> I'm really sorry. And I personally, I, I, I'm taking the hit on this one. It was my fault. So we're actually looking to move the women's forum. I think it's April 4th, I think, is the date. I did send out a message to a couple of the women who had agreed to come on. Um, actually, April 5th. It's Passover. April 5th will be the day for the Women's Forum. And hopefully they'll Passover. still come on. If not, I'll really write them a lengthy apology and beg them to. If not, we'll get guys to come on. Because a lot of guys are like, in Women's Forum. Where's the Men's Forum? Men just aren't as entertaining. Your stories stink. I'll Ooh. just do five people on a screen at a time and just... Guys have, guys have sort of like, girl went in my bathroom and took my soap. That's not a good story. Although it's happened to me. It's I've heard some story. really good ones in scouting people for that. I've heard some really exactly. good ones. I don't know if they're all like good for the podcast, but I've heard some really good, like, crazy, funny stories. Some of them are. Hopefully they'll, they'll let it all hang out. March 29th. The ever so sexy Donica Wild, Canadian model. I love her. I love her post. She's she's out there. She's great. She's super. Uh, April nineteenth, actress Ivy Smith. We got more. We'll plug them in. I will put the post on Facebook like we do with a little picture montage, and uh, we'll check it out. So make sure you check us out next Wednesday night, eight o'clock again. Brie Teller is going to be our very special guest. I'm excited for her, and. Um, yeah, we're going to keep on doing it here the way we do it. We have a great time. Every Wednesday night and Tuesday night, we come on for two hours. Some people say, oh, two hours is so long. Let me tell you one thing real quickly. Allie it's knows not. It, Allie knows not by now. Really it does. <laughs> Allie knows it by now. Jewel knows it by now. And the I beginning was like, Jeff, this is two hours. It's a really long time for a podcast. But it does go by really quickly. And like, listen, a lot I'll of times we'll the do... time and we have like 20 minutes left and we yeah. still have like 10 topics. I'm like, uh, exactly. We do a lot of topics. We do, um, little, um, segments, et cetera, to kind of make it go by like a show. Cause it's not a podcast. Podcast is it's... that, is that half hour crap that they do and they talk. like. I just this. refer to it as show now. Like, right. Webcast, I call it or show. Yeah. It's a show because it's more than just blah. It's visual. There's some audio, there's segments, there's great comments from the audience. And YouTube likes enough to go over 1,000 subscribers. Facebook likes it enough to go for about 9,000 followers. So people enjoy this program. Tell your friends. If everybody tells one friend, that now makes it 9,000, 1,000, 10,000, makes it 20,000 people. We don't hurt nobody here. You see or them? Just, ask them, just ask them to look up Yo Show and just press that subscribe for them. We it's not it. that hard. And on Facebook, just hit the like. And on Twitch, just hit the follow. It's not that hard. And you get this two nights a week. Well, you don't get this two nights a week. You get this. You get a different girl with dark hair on Tuesdays. 
You get Joel on Tuesdays. You get me on hump day. That's just the way it goes. There you go. I will stay moist. Kim, that comment made me a little moist. Apologize to my wife. Uh, <laughs> but good night and thank you again for coming. How many coming. times we do we say moist in one? Oh, trust me. Episode. Never came down. I would say it a lot. I do enjoy it. I do enjoy the moist collective. Thank you to my good man, Jim Hutton and his wife, Tina. It's a great product. It's made locally. A lot Are of you natural. moist? <laughs> I am moist right now. I am definitely moist today. Um, of course, the modern man is my choice. Last night, Jewel had the morning wood bottle and she put it right up to the camera. So, a lot of great Jewel sense. loves her morning wood. She loves her morning wood. Uh, that's why we do the show at night. Because if we did it in the morning, I'd have to confront her on her morning wood. <laughs> Love you, Jewel. You now hate me. It's official. My wife hates me more. I don't know. All right, so let's get the hell out of here. It is 10 o'clock. We uh, did run our two-hour gambit. And I was told by our off-camera producers that if you play the song too long in the beginning, some people will focus out because they don't think the show's coming. So we played a whole song at the end, and we love our St. Ricketts. So guys from St. Ricketts, if you tune in, like, what the heck happened? There are powers to be who know more about technology than I do. I might be great on the mic. I might be gorgeous. I might have a moist Big spear. shout out to Dennis. <laughs> a big shout out to Dennis who says, look, let me handle your computer stuff. You go be great and funny and handsome. When St. Ricketts decides that they will come on the show or produce some new music, then we will let them have a full minute. <laughs> It'll be we'll give them a two hour St. Ricketts show where we just play all their songs on repeat. That'll be, that'll I would be still Thursday be okay night. Okay with Catalyst. I'm one of those people I listen to the song like over and over again. I listen to like fifty times before I Same. move on to another song. So I'm yeah. okay with that. Let me ask you a question real quick. I don't even know if you have it on your playlist. Whatever. Cause I know it's on my playlist. Which and, one? Um, both songs. When fire can, uh, what fire cannot burn, and the catalyst. When it comes on in the car, when it ends, oh, I'm like, I start, it. I start doing the speech. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And my wife's like, "What did you just say?" I'm like, "It's like a habit. That song is like my habit now." So he's got, it's he's got at least forty song. clips. Oh, we're in trouble. It's funny though, like uh, from I'm so used to Wednesday nights song when i when the tuesday night come, song comes on it's like a new song to me right it, the, both of them are burned in my brain and every time they come on i go into the speech i don't i'm insane that's like great that. come Thanks. on saint ricketts we're gonna keep harassing you yeah the we are calls are gonna start soon trust me <laughs> trust her <laughs> ali's got a thing for telephone calls <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a phone answer. I am not yeah, a phone I will guy. get your number and we got you. Like we oh, will try and call you. It's over. It's all over. Let's uh, get their song going and let's thank everybody for a great evening. We'll see you next week with Bree Tower. Tuesday night, Mike Moraz from ACDC cover band or tribute band, Back in Black, the guys who made the movie My Stupid Tribute Band. Great movie. You were going to say one. my stupid podcast, weren't you? Because it's Yeah, because that's... Ever since you said it to me, I've been thinking about it myself. I'm like, yeah, that's going to be a great movie. We're going to have a great movie, Jeff. We are. My stupid podcast. Well, mommy just yelled at the baby, so it's definitely time to go to bed. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Have a great night. Yo, yo, yo. You crazy. St. Ricketts. Is it my
Yes, there will be days when 